we're gonna cover the most explosive training of all time, and we're gonna start right now. Most people have seen this iconic footage that we're about to cover. And this footage is especially leaves like this iconic feeling because of the impact it has on people when they first see it. They're gonna see this big, huge, hulking Swiss Alp of a man doing very, very coordinated exercises that are very balanced, but also very explosive with a lot of strength. And it's gonna be a lot of contrast style training uh, with a lot of mobility, a lot of just very, very impressive, overly impressive uh, movement regimes. And I think that I wanted to share initially is that this video, so this video was given to me by Paul Ferency, and this is back in 2000 on a VHS cassette. Paul was a world champion uh, Highland Games competitor, and he said, look, he, this video is in French, it's amazing. Watch it, see what you think, and then try and build that out. I should look for that VHS cassette from my parents. But anyway, going back to this, I found a local French teacher, and this is back going into my senior year of high school. We got it translated, and we looked at how we could lay this out, myself and my training partners, and we built a 16-week program based off of this VHS cassette. So it's got a very, very big impact on my own personal journey in the world of sports performance. And that led me into you know, my senior year, all of us, there was two of us that, out of our group of four that ended up being all state football players. And then that led into myself also winning a, a state championship in shot put. And it was, this video has a huge impact on me in my entire development and is still one of the foundational aspects around what I believe in and how we use training. Okay, so what I wanna look at now is what is it? Werner Gunther. And if we look at this athlete right off the bat, first of all, sweet mullet. Second of all, sweet stash. Third, absolute animal. Three-time world champion. I want to say he got fourth. He sort of choked in the 92 Olympics. And I think he might have even... No, he might have gotten fourth in, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, he might have gotten third in 88 and then fourth or fifth in 92 and he was supposed to win, but uh, Michael Stolz ended up beating him. Okay, so let's check this out because I think that this is going to be important for us, you know, to just see what's he doing. And then we're going to cover how can you guys apply this into your own training across all sports. So here he's doing some really, really cool stuff with his trunk. And so think about the trunk control stuff that I discussed. This stuff's way older than what we think about. And if we look at what he's doing, you know, people will be like, oh, Duff and Rose, or what is it? If we do some of the some of the contralateral work for mobility in the lower back and through the hips, it's like, dude, this stuff was going on back in the 80s. Like, hold on a second, Instagram. It didn't just start. This stuff has been going on for a long time. And so we can see too, uh, the balance from Werner Gunther, you know, so he's a Swiss shot putter. We can see that flexion into the knee, into the hip, and he even does this on his non-dominant side, which helps him with his stability. Now, he's not as coordinated with that left knee and that left hip because it's hard. Also, check out that sweet pattern from those spandex. Love it. Okay, now he gets that rotation there. Now he starts to use a barbell, okay? And this is something that I do think pitchers could use this uh, cricketers could use this. I think wrestlers could even do aspects like this for warmups. And then you start to see some of these ballistic movements with him really, really controlling these positions. And what this does in the world of throwing is that it sort of forces him to control and feel power output or impulse from his feet into his hands. And some of this work here, this is something that we could see javelin throwers doing. Um, again, pitchers in, in baseball and in softball would benefit quite a bit. I also think even golfers could benefit here. What's interesting is that his coach that you see in some of these shots actually worked a little bit with one of my athletes, Alex Rose. Alex was training in New Zealand and was around Valerie Adams and this coach, his coach, also worked a little bit with Valerie Adams, which is pretty cool. So you can start to see some of the mobility stuff here. Good solid depth there. Nice ankle mobility, good pop. This dude's stupid strong, stupid strong. Look at that sweet freaking squat rack too. Okay, so now he's getting into some leg extensions. Doesn't he know that isolating joints is bad and that training on machines is bad? How dare he? Now we start to see greater overload on the eccentric. So they're starting to comprehend, okay, look, you can handle more load on the eccentric versus the concentric. Uh, and that can transfer over into some potential barbell squats. The high bar, you notice that good upright posture. And he is in weightlifting shoes there too. 
I can't believe there's we're still in the era where athletes aren't using weightlifting shoes in training. So what's he got on there? About 170, 170 kilos. Long duration, full range of motion stretching. Some recent papers have come out about the impact of long static stretching on muscular growth. Okay, so now he's getting into some alternating leg curls. Ooh, now he's getting a pump on those triceps and how that's gonna transfer over to that 150K bench press. Okay, so he's getting swole because one of the big things too we gotta think about in the world of throwing is that extension on the elbow. Now he's got, yeah, the 150K bench. And the, this is another big factor too, is that we have to think about to be an athlete that recruits at very, very high speeds, as a shot putter does, uh, they're some of the most explosive athletes in the world, along with Olympic weightlifters, along with gymnasts. They've got to do a lot of jumps. They've got to do a lot of full range of motion work. They've got to build up some big time muscle and then be able to recruit that at very high speeds. Gunther here, this was one of the ones, so we actually did this back in the day in high school. I should see if we have any of this on my old blog. I love this for lengthening the lower back and the hamstrings. It's hard to set this up, but it can be very, very effective for the lats. And you can do this on a glute ham. Okay, you can do this at an easier tempo on the glute ham. And he also would do quite a bit uh, of these complexes, almost as like a warm up. Yeah, this video specifically is in German. The one I had was in French. I think in, in Switzerland, I think they speak French, Italian, and German, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. But he liked to do this for mobility, for recovery, and, and as warm up. So this would be something that he would do in the beginning of a session. And, Think about two here. One of the big factors, I think when we see like this machine usage and we see like this almost Rocky style of footage, it's like, how can you piece all of this stuff into one training system? You know, this is a shot putter. How could we do that for something like a combat sport? And I think that that's one of the big aspects around our strength training at peak strength is that we take these concepts of explosive movements in we use that on athlete day or we'll use that for technical coordination on a leg power day okay and then we're using things like big absolute strength exercises like increasing your back squat increasing your front squat increasing maybe even an rdl or something like that or a single leg squat and then we'll also pair that with some bodybuilding work that is more unilateral or more joint specific so that we can get that structural bodybuilding we can get some more size now here's another big one we see a lot of like the functional gurus today talking about barefoot training. The crazy aspect here is that in power output sports like throwing, the world of throwing, you know, think about, I had access to this. So this video I think came out like 90 or 91. I was given this video about 10 years later by Paul Ferency again. And then we started to do this in 2001, 2002 when I graduated high school in bare feet. And it's like, the barefoot realm was around way longer uh, than we actually realized. I mean, even if we can think of the Taramahora marathoners or, or distance runners, they have been doing this for centuries. And it's, it's just one of those things that I think this is a great way to warm up on an athlete day is to be in your bare feet or be in your socks here. And you're gonna to start to see some of this is gonna lead into some of the really iconic footage that, we, that we've seen online, but again, if you can factor this into, you have one day that's mainly focused on strength. You have one day that's also then more focused on your, your athleticism. And then as you periodize things, and that's what we do inside Peak Strength, we create a full-blown periodization model that you can follow from that development period to then getting more precise towards your sport. And then as you see the, the joint angles, the rate of coordination that we're looking at, at least the greater dynamic correspondence, and that in turn will help you lead to a better peak. That's what we do from the exposure phase to the comprehension phase, then into the ascension phase, and then into the summit phase so that you can start to peak specific for your sport. So you guys can head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store, and you can download Peak Strength today. Now let's get back to this. Look at that big time freaking standing throw. Okay, so now I wanna get into some of the more unique stuff that we're gonna see. And here you're gonna see some constant resistance from this hydraulic. It's a really unique machine there. I'm not entirely sure what he was doing with that. He was also big into, so during the intensive period here, so he would do these 30 second isometrics. And what's interesting is that we had this video translated and then I got exposed to some of the shock training that Jay Schroeder, Adam Archuleta were doing. So we started to figure out what they were 
doing Werner Gunther was with these 30 second isometrics that we started to factor in like really, really long duration isometrics. And you can see here, he's getting even more explosive. He'll pause, explode, pause, explode. Okay, so we can start to see how, how we would use this. If you guys want us to react to some of the crazy Jay Schroeder training, let us know. Some of that stuff was pretty wild. Okay, so you can see here too, and I even got on my old YouTube channel, I have video of us doing these long duration holds on the incline bench and on the flat bench. And then after that, he would do explosiveness. So he'd hold, boom, hold, boom, hold, boom. Now this is where we're gonna see some of the crazy contrast work. Okay, so he's going here, he's setting this up and he's doing some squats. Those, those bars, the bumpers look like the old Kraybergs. The old Kraybergs were my first bumper plates that I ever got. We still use them here today. And these Avia shoes, these are like the first cross trainers that you could squat with and then do some explosive movements. So that's another one. Okay, let's go here. So he, so he drops that, right? This is the footage here. Boop, 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 boop. But now he gets through these little depth drop positions here. Okay, trying to absorb that. Boom, ground, handle that. This is where Al Vermeil would say triple flexion. Then he comes off and goes right into those hurdle hops. So the interesting part here is you could in theory say this is a three or four part system. Now, notice everybody. He's doing a single leg squat. The strongest, possibly one of the most explosive athletes of all time, along with, you know, if you looked at Joe Kovacs would be up there. This is Werner Gunther doing single leg squats, using the single leg squat and then going into single leg bounds. Good contrast work. This is a dude weighing like 320 pounds, okay? Same thing here, works through explosive ankle structure. Okay, he's gonna drop that. Look at that, we should remake that shoe. Somebody should remake that Avia. Now he's gonna do pogos. There's actually a research paper on uh, the way the Maasai jump compared to Caucasian men uh, and how the Maasai jump much more like a pogo here. Now we have somebody doing, now we have him doing um, like almost like a Cossack squat. Maybe we could go a little bit deeper, but that's probably 70 kilos that he's got on the bar. And then he's comparing this, he's using this contrast work. Okay, remember we're in contrast here. And then when you use contrast training, then you that leads into more of a peak. So he's here, boom, 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 nice and easy, back and forth. And this would be great for a speed skater, this would be great for lacrosse, for football, any, anything along those lines. Now this is a boom, boom, boom. Okay, so think about an explosive work like that. That's freaking power, okay? But that's really impulse development, impulse expression. And then right here, we've got the shot swing at the gym. Uh, one of the things I like about this is it's basically like a explosive or plyometric movements, very specific to the actual throw of the shot, okay? So you have to boom, boom, and you have to have that trunk control. And so after we do a lot of that volume build out and then we get into more intensive stuff, now we're getting into even more sports specific work. So you can see how they lay that out. He's gonna get even heavier here. And then some of the explosive technical coordination movements start to get even more intense. Okay, so some of the uh, snatches, some of the cleans to jerks, they're gonna get very, very specific to a throw. Okay, so you're gonna see a clean into a, into a power jerk and how that relates to the actual throw. Full range of motion back squats there, but again, remember weightlifting exercises, full range of motion squats, those things don't help you actually be more explosive. It's just by chance that this guy's doing full range of motion, single leg squats, back squats, benches, cleans, snatches, jerks. And it just by chance is that he's also one of the most explosive athletes of all time. But if you guys wanna train like that, again, go over to Peak Strength, that app pick up peak strength to get that crazy explosive training. So I also think he changed his sponsorship here. So you see that power clean where he went from Avia to, to Nike. See that good power clean there. 
It's almost like a low hang power clean. Probably around 170 kilos. Large amount of impulse there. I love these old school Alico plates too. I think this is where he does a power jerk. This is probably 190 to 200. There's a triple there. I've always liked that clanging metal out in an outside position. Now this is where Werner could work on more, more full foot contact, less jump back. This is a very upright position too. He's not hinging very much on the pull, which is fine. And this is power clean, power jerk, very rapid. Boom, boom, okay. And then you can see how they, they think about this relative to the throw. Then you ground in the middle and drive up rapidly. It's almost like the catch is the counter movement into the drive. It's interesting too here is like you can see the speed of that and the depth, that's freaking awesome, dude. And they're timing it. Getting faster and faster and faster. Jump squats right into some hurdle hops. And a lot of this too is just like priming that nervous system, getting ready for the big peak. And then when they deload here, uh, before Big Peak, that's what is going to elicit those big, huge throws. He's a new pair of shorts there. Okay, so I think it's interesting when you're just looking at some of the actual modalities that Gunther is using. He's using a lot of heavy lifting. He's using a lot of fast lifting. He's using a lot of athlete style training a lot of jumps, a lot of impulse development. I think that's gonna be key if you want to become a freak athlete. You've gotta figure out how many days a week should I be training? How many days should I be doing something where I'm moving heavy weight fast? How many days should I be doing some strength work where I'm gonna be moving some heavier weight, not at a higher velocity, but I'm still recruiting very rapidly. And then how many days should I figure out inside that athlete day? And that's exactly what we can do for you inside of our app, Peak Strength. All you guys have to do is head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store, because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.